Um, and welcome to those who are watching with us online today. Thank you for being with us, and please join your prayers and praises with us. Um, today, um, we will be using, there's an insert in your bulletin. There's two, I know, one's the prayers. But this little insert that says um, Holy Communion responses to the Decalogue. Um, and at the end of the service, these little pieces of paper, please leave them in the narthex. Because we'll be using these for the rest of Lent uh, up until, n but not including um, Palm Sunday. Um, so also, it is appropriate to sit or kneel during the Decalogue. So um, remind, so immediately after I do the opening sentences, we will then turn to the Decalogue and those responses at the end of each commandment is then sung. So um, why don't you play once through. Oh, so that's what it will sound like anyway. So, all right. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy Page 320. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it, it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ thy Son, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated. The opening lesson is the story of God's call of Abraham, who was then known as Abram, to leave his own country and, be and become the father of a great nation. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in all the, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Using your bulletin, please join me in reading Psalm 122 responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over you going out and your coming in, for this time forth forevermore. Our epistle is from Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 7. In this passage, Paul describes Abraham as an individual who through faith found a right relationship with God. 
He is the Father of all who trust in the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without work trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that we, we would merit in the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is this, the adherents of the law, who are to be their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there is no law, neither is the, their violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? 
Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For those who didn't catch it, I made them a typo in the, in the bulletin. Um, the psalm today was actually 121 and not 122. I discovered that at 8 o'clock service when I thought, wait a minute. <laughs> anyway, our reading from the Old Testament is God's call to Abram to set out on a journey away from his kindred and his father's house to a land that God would show him. God tells Abram that he would make him a great nation. Now that may have seemed impossible to Abram because he and Sarah had no children and she was said to be barren and beyond childbearing age. But still, they listened, and they set out in faith on their journey. And then in today's gospel, we find Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a leader among the Jews, visiting Jesus one night. In the light of day, Nicodemus's loyalties were clearly devoted to the Jewish establishment. But in private, Nicodemus found himself questioning what was going on with this new teacher, this rabbi called Jesus. And so he visits, visits Jesus. Nicodemus saw that Jesus was a good teacher and a knowledgeable interpreter of the law. But Jesus was also filled with God's life-giving spirit, and Nicodemus wanted that kind of a relationship with God as well. And to have that kind of relationship with God, Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. You can just imagine his shock. How can that be? Nicodemus might have said. He must have laughed as he asked, can one enter again into his mother's womb and be born again? Well, despite what might have seemed impossible, we now go back to Abram and Sarah. God did call Abram and Sarah to follow and have faith in the impossible. 
and have faith they did. Through that faith and the power of God, their offspring did indeed produce a great nation, as God had promised. Faith led them to a great new day, a day of such greatness that they could not have even ever imagined it. In today's Old Testament lesson, we have the part of the story when Abram took Sarah on a journey to a new land, a land where they didn't even know anyone. They didn't know the land, they didn't know the people, but they listened and followed God. It was where God had led them. They followed it into a new life. What an unlikely couple to be the forerunners of a great nation. These two stories are intended to produce a new kind of thinking, what some people call thinking outside of the box. Thinking in a new and innovative ways that can, thinking in new and innovative ways can lead to ideas that are not confined by experiences of the past or the norms of the present. Ideas that can lead us to act outside of our comfort zones. Jesus was trying to get Nicodemus to live outside the box of his old preconceptions of what the law meant. He said to Nicodemus, as he says to us, come and be renewed with a new birth that will transform you into a new person. Jesus says to us today, come and be renewed with a new birth that will transform you into a new person. Be open to the power of the Spirit to work in you, Jesus says. Come and be renewed with a new birth so that you may regain for yourself that image of God that was lost in Eden. Think about this. If we are born again, we must also grow up again. Think about your life. What would you do differently if you had the chance to go back and change things in your life? How would you grow up differently? How would you re-edit the narrative of your life? Jesus invites us to be reborn again, to rethink our assumptions with an altered perspective. Jesus challenges us to look to the future through the eyes of better possibilities. How might our lives be different if we were born again? How could our lives be altered if we believed that God loves us with a sacrificial love that makes us worth actually dying for? Well, Lent is a time to rethink our lives. Seeing our past and future through the eyes of the one who loves us in that way. A way that took him to the cross, to the grave, and then to new life. The new birth involves an exercise of faith, of risk. Nicodemus was ready to take a little bit of risk in coming to see Jesus but he tried to minimize that risk by coming at night so that no one could see him. Abraham and Sarah were people of faith who were willing to risk in a big way. They responded to the call of God and set out by faith toward a land that they had never seen. God also asked us to take risk to risk what it takes to be born again to a new way of loving and caring in this world. To embrace, to embark on a new way of focusing on the values of God's kingdom. A new way of acting on the beliefs in a deep, on the belief in a deeper and more meaningful way that puts to shame our materialism and our reliance on ourselves alone. Despite what may be a common perception, Lent is not a time for suffering or misery. That is not what giving up things or taking on new challenges is all about. 
The purpose of all of this is renewal. Lent is for renewal. Lent is about remembering how Abraham and Sarah went out in faith and heeding their example of faith and moving into the unknown by following Jesus wherever he may lead us. Lent is about hearing and heeding the words that Nicodemus heard from Jesus that to enter into God's kingdom we must be born again, born anew to a way that turns upside down the values of our world. Born anew to the reality that what really matters is God's love and God's forgiveness. This represents a power so attractive that once we accept it, we then want to share what we have for the sake of others. Other folk may think that we've lost our minds, but anyone, but any who are willing to be born again will see the light of Christ and be saved through him. Amen. Stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our diocesan bishop. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and parishioners of Church of the Resurrection, Alexandria, and Trinity, Manassas. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion. In, in your mercy, mercy, hear us. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the poor, 
the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for Chip Holt and those on our prayer list, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protect us. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those celebrating their birthdays this week, Meredith Kasky and Jim Dudley. For those celebrating their anniversaries, Phil and Karen Brown, Gary and Susan Sullivan, and Jamie and Beverly Barnhart. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. And communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, we pray especially for the repose of those souls of James Johnson Sr. and Don Stebbins. Let us pray to the Father, Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. God our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come to you in penitence with prayer and fasting and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up to your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the word of God to all who truly turn to him, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with all you. Welcome once again, and welcome to those online once again. Um, I would want to make a big thank you, huge thank you, to those who worked so hard this past week to get the, the church ground cemetery cleaned up in preparation for Dave Wilcox's funeral, for those who helped with the funeral in ushering and in the service, for those who brought food and those who set up for the reception, um, for all the many aspects that, if, for the music, for all the many aspects that go into um, saying goodbye to a beloved parishioner. Um, thank you. That was a wonderful day and place was packed, as you know, with about 159 people, I was told. So um, Dave was well loved. Um, as you heard in the prayers, um, the James Johnson Sr. is um, Ellen Johnson's son, her eldest son, who died this past week. Um, and this morning at 6.30, um, Don Stebbins um, died over at RWC. So don't have any arrangements for either of those services at this time. Um, of course, Ellen's son's funeral will be next door at Calvary. Um, and... Um, so anyway, this coming week on Wednesday, um, Wednesday morning at 9.30 is the Wednesday morning Eucharist um, in the chapel. Wednesday late afternoon at 5.30 is our 